Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be upgrading from my Mac Mini with M1 processor to a Mac Studio with M2 processor. So I'll be doing a first boot on this, and then I'll go over some of the migration assistant stuff. Now, I did do an unboxing of this, and I'll put a link below to that video. So to get started, I have this connected up to this monitor here. I have Ethernet on it, and I have a keyboard and mouse connected. And I have my Mac Mini with M1 already set up over here. So I'll get this booted. Okay, so I just pressed the button. Just had a chime. Okay, and we have a boot screen. It says hello. I'll hit enter. It wants me to choose a language. To use English as the main language, press the return key. So I'll hit enter. Now I may speed up different parts of this, but I'll try and put a note on the screen. It says select your country or region. It's default to United States. I'll hit continue. Mac OS contains a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to use voice. It has written and spoken languages. I'll use the defaults there. I'll hit continue. It has accessibility. So if you have accessibility issues, you can configure that right away. I'll hit not now. It's asking to join Wi-Fi. I'm already connected to Ethernet, so I'll skip this. Actually, I'll go to other networking options. I'll say local Ethernet. I'll hit continue. And it has options for Ethernet. I'll hit continue here. I'll hit continue again. <laughs> I didn't have it connected up. As data and privacy screen, I'll hit continue. It has migration assistant. Now I like to use migration assistant, but I'm going to skip it for now. It has set up Apple ID. I'll skip that for now also. I'll agree to the terms and conditions. Now it wants me to create a computer account. So when I run Migration Assistant, it will copy over my account from the other computer. That can cause some confusion. So when I set up a new account now, I could use my real name and everything, but I'm going to use a fake name. That way it doesn't cause any conflict when it copies over the account. So I'll just say John Doe and I'll just put a fake password in. Now I used a very simple password. If you're in a place with heightened security, this may not even be a good idea, just temporarily. I feel okay doing this in my house and I'm going to delete this account immediately once I get everything transferred over. But I could be vulnerable in that meantime. So I'll hit continue here. So this talks about location services. I'm not going to enable them yet, but I will eventually. It says select your time zone. Click over here in the middle. Minnesota's close enough, I'll hit continue. I don't want to share analytics, I'll hit continue. This talks about screen time, I'll say set up later. This talks about dark mode, I'll do auto mode, I'll hit continue. None of this really matters because when I migrate the account, it will get those settings over. So I'll hit continue here. It wants me to identify my keyboard, so I'll hit the key next to shift, which is a Z. Then I will hit the forward slash. I'll hit done. And here we're logged in. So now I'll connect this up to my old Mac and I'll start the migration. Okay, so I want to talk about my setup here for migrating. So I currently both have this plugged into a switch with one gigabit ethernet. And I have a little test setup here. I have this software called Open Speed Test Server on my Mac Mini with M1 processor. And then on the Mac Studio, I've opened up the URL here to the speed test. Let me run that. And here you can see I got 752 megabits down and 776 megabits up. I actually would have thought it would have gone faster than that. But let's try the same test. And I'm going to connect the two with this Driver Genius USB-C cable. And this was provided to me by Driver Genius for a previous video, but they have no association with this video. And this has 40 gigabit per second transfer speeds. Now I'm not going to get that fast, but we'll see it's a lot faster. So there is a different IP address and I will go over this closely, but I have that up here. I'll hit start. Okay, so I was having some trouble. I just unplugged the ethernet. So I'll hit start here. And here you can see we got 17,000 megabits per second and 21,000 megabits per second. So that's way faster. Now I'll put a link below to the Driver Genius cable if you want to purchase one of those. So I'll go over a little bit of how that's set up. Now I'm on the Mac Studio. You go into the system settings to network. And if you don't have a Thunderbolt bridge here, you want to go down here to this at the bottom, hit add service, and then choose Thunderbolt bridge. Now, if you're connected to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you can also go down here to set service order and make sure Thunderbolt is at the top. It can also help to just disconnect either of those two. So you want to do that on both computers. Now, if you want to see the IP address, you can click on the Thunderbolt bridge and it will tell you the IP address. 
but I don't think I'll need that. So now I want to start the migration. So I'm just going to hold command space and type in migration and you'll see migration assistant come up. Here it talks a little bit about it. It says all other apps will quit when you hit continue. So I'll hit continue here. It wants me to enter in my password. Now it has three options here. It says, how do you want to transfer your information? It says from a Mac, from Windows PC, or to another Mac. So I want to choose the first option from a Mac. I'll hit continue. So now I want to go to the other Mac. I'm going to open up migration system the same way, but I'll choose that to a Mac option. Okay, so once I did it, it's showing up here. So I'll choose that and I'll hit continue. So I'm going to look on the two computers, make sure this number matches up and it does. You can see that over here. I guess I could back up just a little bit. So I'll hit continue. Now on the old computer, it's going to look for applications and such to transfer. It says current connection is Thunderbolt, so we have that confirmed. And this has a one terabyte drive in it too, and it's not quite half full. So now we see on the studio, it has a list of things that's asking me what I want to transfer. So everything is checked by default, so I'll hit continue. And now it's asking me to create a password for each account I want to migrate. So I'll do that. Now I have some other admin accounts there. I don't really need those. I may delete them later, but I'll hit continue. And it's giving me that temporary default password. I'll hit continue. Now it's saying to migrate, I need to authenticate with an existing user. So I have that John Doe account. I'll hit authorize. I'll hit okay. And I'll hit continue. So now it's transferring. So had I created an account on the new computer with my name, similar to the account on the old computer, it might say there's some kind of conflict and ask if you want to override it and stuff, which is fine and you can do that. I just prefer to create a new account that I can just wipe out later. So I'll probably speed up the video here while it transfers and then we'll come back when it's done and see how it did. So when I click on this connection details, it does say it's connected with Thunderbolt. It says it's sampled at 734 megabytes per second. So I'm going to stop the video and then I'll come back when this is finished up. Okay, so it finished up. So I did that speed test and that showed kind of a theoretical speed. In practice, it topped out at about 700 megabytes per second and it's going to restart right now. And then the migration will be complete or it may have me do something. Now the old computer, I can hit done and I can log back in on it while the new computer continues booting. So this has a migration summary. We have migration warnings. Let me look at it. It says some documents for system administrator could not be transferred and it has some kind of Bluetooth package. So I'll hit continue, I'll hit done. And I can log in. So it does want me to log in with my Apple ID, so I'll do that. Now it's going through iCloud setup and it looks mostly set up. Let me try and open some software. This is the Affinity software. And I wanted to check and see if it was logged in and it does look like it is logged in. So you may have things like Adobe accounts and such that you'll need to go in and authorize the software and you may need to go on the old computer and deauthorize it. But once you've migrated everything, you do want to go through and check that everything is there. Now I'll say I also do have a backup on the old computer. You may want to start a brand new backup on the new computer. You want to do all that before you wipe the old computer. So that migration took, I think around 45 minutes. When it first started, it did say it was going to take nine hours, but then it got faster over time. So that's a little overview of upgrading and migrating from my Mac Mini with M1 processor to the Mac Studio with M2 processor. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.